Hi, my name is Ying Gao and welcome to Dr. Gao's classroom. I'm a professional philosopher and I love classic Chinese poetry. I have been translating classical Chinese poetry with a colleague of mine for the last few years and I would love to share my knowledge with you. Your enjoyment is my command. So in my last video, I talked about the great poet Wang Wei and his rocket rise after his huge success in civil service examination and how much attention he was getting from the royal clan. I also left a hint on his fall from great strength after that. So today, I'm going to talk about the event that brought down Wang Wei from his early successful career and another event that almost got him killed during the Anlusan Rebellion and how Wang Wei escaped from execution by a poem he composed. And I'll explain and translate that poem. And also, to fulfill my promise on my first video on Wang Wei, I'm going to talk about his Buddhist belief and his retreat into Siamese hermit lifestyle and a poem expressing his belief as well as a copied painting of his. So his retreat gave him an opportunity to find solace in the Buddhist rituals and the nature world. It was during this time Wang Wei's talents in poetry, music, and painting were perfectly integrated into his amazingly beautiful poems that were both musically and visually elegant. I'm also going to quote and translate two such poems in my next videos. And I'm going to say it is very hard decision to make because there were just too many excellent poems to choose from. Well, if you're intrigued, check out my next video or you can contact me by email I listed down below so we can read one with poetry to your heart content. In my last video, I sort of talked about how successful Wang Wei was in the civil service examination and at the court when he was appointed as the deputy head or Tai Yue Cheng of the Royal Ritual and Musical Department. However, he was caught up in the court politics soon after that and became a victim in the conflicts between the emperor and his half-brothers just two months after his appointment. This was called the Yellow Line Dance Incident. It happened something like this. Wang Wei and his boss, the head of his department, were to organize a line dance for the Double Nice Festival, Chongyang Jie, and they hosted a banquet for Prince Li Fan the night before the festival. Prince Li Fan was intoxicated by too much wine and asked to view the yellow line dance, which was strictly reserved for the emperor according to the rules. Wang Wei and his boss, probably as drunk as the prince, ordered the dancer to perform that line dance. Someone reported the event to the emperor later and the emperor became very angry and banished both Wang Wei and his boss to a remote location far away from the capital. Wang Wei's post was in Jizhou, today's Shandong province, and two ranks lower than his first post. He stayed in the post for four years until the emperor pardoned all the implicated officials. After Wang Wei and his colleague organized successfully a, a, the emperor's sacrificial ceremony at Mount Tai, which is a way to show how wonderful the uh, emperor was. And Wang Wei quit his post, returned to Chang'an soon after that. So this was a huge blow to Wang Wei's confidence as a scholar official. It's probably understandable because this happened when he was only 21. And in the following nine years, Wang Wei lived a semi-retired life, holding various low rank positions. And he also lost his wife when he just turned 31 and he never married again. After his wife passed away, he quit his job and traveled for about two years visiting many friends, including Meng Haoran, the best friend of Li Bai too, before he accepted a new position at the court. Around 740, 
Meng Haoran and another Wang Wei's close friend passed away. Wang Wei was just devastated and also very disappointed with the court politics. So he just decided to retire. And he bought a huge estate at the foot of Zhongnan Mountain or Zhongnan Shan, named Wang Chuan in 741 to build a retreat for his mother and himself so that they can practice meditation and other Buddhist ritual in peace. Wang Wei composed a lot of poems describing the sceneries and lives uh, that he had at the retreat, as well as a long silk scroll of painting of the retreat scenery and life. Wang Wei's poetry and painting was still celebrated more than a thousand years later today. Unfortunately, we lost all his painting, but we do have a copied painting of his preserved in a Japanese Buddhist temple. So here is the picture. This is just one of the scenes from the, this huge estate. Wang Wei stayed there until the An Lushan Rebellion broke out in 755. An Lushan took over the second capital Luoyang in 756, and the Emperor Li Longji fled the capital in secrecy. Many of the officials and aristocrats were left in the dark and remained in the capital. So Wang Wei and many of them were captured by An Lushan's army. And of course, An Lushan self-claimed himself as the new emperor and forced many of these officials to accept his appointments in the new court, including Wang Wei. To celebrate his victory, An Lushan held a huge party at the royal garden in Luoyang and ordered the royal performing troupe to perform at the party. One musician refused to perform and started yelling at An Lushan and his other you know, uh, fellow generals and was killed on the spot. Wang Wei and many other officials were deeply shocked and ashamed that they were not as courageous as the lowly musician. So later, Wang Wei composed the following poem to commemorate this event. Let me read this. Wan Hu Sang Xin Sheng Ye Yan, Bai Liao He Ri Geng Chao Tian, Qiu Huai Ye Luo Kong Gong Li, Ning Bi Chi Tou Zhou Guan Xian. So let me just read them line by line. Wan Hu Sang Xin Sheng Ye Yan, Wan is ten thousand. Hu is household, Sang is heard, and Xin is heart. Sheng is generate. I think this can be interpreted as when the war is going on and the battle is going on, lots of fire break out, either led by the battle or by the soldier or by the people who have to leave their home. Uh, so Sheng is generated, Ye is wild, and Yan is smoke, Bai is hundred. Liao is the officials, and He Ri is Wan. Geng can be translated as again, and Chao is actually turned towards someone, like Chao Xiang, the orientation of the house. Tian is heaven, but here it's referred to the emperor because the emperor was called the son of heaven. So Tian here can be simply interpreted as the emperor. So if you put these two lines together, it translates as 10,000 households lie devastated in a smoky landscape. When will the hundred officials see their emperor again? So this is like they were missing the emperor who fled the capital. So the next two lines reads, Qiu Huai Ye Luo Kong Gong Li. So Qiu is autumn, Huai is the scholar tree, Ye is leaf, Luo is fall, Kong is empty, Gong is palace, and Li is inside. The next line, Ning Bi Chi Tou Zhou Guan Xian. So Ning is concealed, Bi is emerald, Chi is lake, Tou is top. The top here actually was a quite interesting word to use here. So Chi Tou actually is where the water flows into the lake. The Chinese use Tou in similar way, like a Changjiang Tou, like the source of Yangtze River. And Zhou is play, and Guan is bamboo flute, 
and xian is string. Here, just refer to the string instrument like a scissors. So when you put these two lines together, it raise. The autumn leaves of the scholar tree fall in the empty palace. An orchestra plays on by the emerald jet lake. So this is the poem that Wang Wei composed when he was imprisoned in a Buddhist temple at Luoyang. So he sort of pretend that he was sick to try to refuse the appointment, but you know he was forced to accept it eventually. When the crown prince Li Heng self-claimed the new emperor after the old emperor fled to Sichuan, so when he took back the two capitals, the many officials who accepted the position at An Lusan's court were implicated and many were executed. Wang Wei was also on the list to be harshly punished. However, when this poem was presented to the new emperor by Wang Wei's younger brother, Wang Jin, who became a high rank official at the new court due to his achievement under uh, the Prince Li Heng, uh, Wang Wei was pardoned. He even got a new appointment at the new emperor's court. However, Wang Wei was deeply ashamed of his own cowardice and lost the interest in his political career. So in the following years until his death, Wang Wei turned more and more to the Buddhism and the natural world. He bought a huge property at the foot of the, um, the Zhongnan Mountain or Zhongnan Shan at Wang Chuan and started reconstruction at the estate. Wang Wei composed many poems reflecting his life here. It is quite interesting that his Buddhist belief were tied closely with the Taoist religion, which took solace in the natural world. For Wang Wei, there was no point in distinguishing these two religions as long as they could alleviate his pain and suffering. So the following poem perhaps reflects his feeling during this time. So let me just read this. I got this calligraphy. I know you probably won't be able to read it, but it was just so beautiful. I'm just going to read this poem. 独坐幽皇里, 弹琴复长笑, 森林人不知, 明月来相照. Now I'm just going to show you the writings in this slide. So du zuo yu huang li, du means alone, zuo is sit, yu is dark, huang is the bamboo graph, and li is inside. Tan is like a plug, plug the string, and qin is scissor, and fu is like an end. You do one thing and then you also do another thing, so that's fu. Chang here is uh, translated as loud because Chang literally means long, but when you describing a sound, it's actually loud. And Xiao is visual. So when you translate these two lines, it reads, I sit along in a secluded bamboo graph, plugging my scissor and whistling. So the next two lines reads, Shen Lin Ren Bu Zhi. So Shen means deep, and Lin is the wood or forest, and Ren is person or people, and Bu is not, and Zhi is no. And Ming Yue Lai Xiang Zhao, Ming is bright, and Yue is moon, and Lai is calm, and Xiang is like a towards, like a Xiang Xiang Er Qing, like a walk towards each other. And Zhao is sign. So when you put these two lines together, it rains. Deep in the woods, no one knows I'm here. The bright moon comes to shine on me. So this is sort of describing the quiet meditation that he was taking and also the you know the quiet night that he enjoys in this estate. And this is like a, you know, a mixture of Buddhism as well as Taoism, because Taoism was the one that uh, make people take solace in the nature world. So it was in this peaceful nature world, Wang Wei find solace for his tormented soul. Perhaps he had wondered what could have happened if he was more courageous, like his younger brother taking up the sword, fight against the rebels, or like that brave musician who would rather die than performing for the rebels. It might be a different story, 
Yet it was exactly his tragic life made him turn to poetry, painting, and started a completely new tradition of scholarly painting or Wen Ren Hua, which later become one of the four skills defining a true scholar. So they are playing the scissor and go, calligraphy and scholarly painting or Qin Qi Shu Hua. So in my next video, I'll talk about how Wang Wei integrated his musical and visual art talents into his poetry. I would explain and translate two of my favorite poems from Wang Wei and show you how beautiful poetry can be when you have someone like Wang Wei. If you're interested in knowing more about Wang Wei, please check out my channel to find out my next video. Or if you like to read more of Wang Wei's poem, please subscribe my channel. I also offer one-to-one -one online lessons on classic Chinese poetry, philosophy, and medical literature. If you are interested in reading the classics on these topics, please contact me. I list my email address down below. Otherwise, thanks for viewing my video and hopefully I'll see you next time. Thank you.